year, the V8 Utes kick off the season on the streets of Adelaide. It's one of the most daunting tracks of the season. One that rewards tough racing and hard charges. This is rough stuff. Defense. Robin's racing in Utes. Go, boys. Rip the mirrors off. Oh. <laughs> now, here's the move. Oh, oh the mirror up. That's big. Here. That's big. He's going to Hey! Another crash. Oh. Oh. Yeah. That's good. That's a huge hit. Oh, he's he's gone. Gone. The guys are going crazy. This is round one of the East Coast Ball Bars V8 Ute Series. The 15th season of Australia's wildest form of racing is ready to start once again in Adelaide. It's the first of eight rounds of the championship. We'll be kicking it all off with three races this weekend. We're also celebrating racing's greatest rivalry too, as the fastest Holden and Ford drivers will square off in a one-on-one -on -one qualifying session. The usual suspects are back in 2015, including two-time champ Ryle Harris, and the man who so badly deserves the championship after finishing second again last year, David Cedars. But the man they're all chasing is the defending champ, Chris Walton. He's back to defend his crown after his stellar performance last year. And so to get a bit more of an idea as to who are the drivers to watch out for this weekend, let's go to Kylie King. Last year, Chris Walton took on the Adelaide street circuit in style, setting a new lap record and signalling his intentions to ramp it up a level. He continued to rack up points as the season continued, going on to claim the championship. Now, with the title to his name, he's hungry to get back to hard racing. I mean, last year, I mean, to be honest, the last few rounds, it, it was hard, you know, I just couldn't, you just couldn't do what you wanted to do. So, we're the first round here now, we're going to throw everything at it, we're going to go back to the way everything was. We're going to give it everything we've got for the first few rounds and hopefully we can be on the top. And then, um, yeah, well, that's all we can hope for, we just want to win races. David Cedars has had enough of finishing runner-up in the championship. He's turned to some drastic measures to try and secure his first title. It's been a long career in Ford, so it's a, it's, it was sad to say goodbye, but time to move on and try and get that number one plate. And with the, the aspects we've seen from Reese McNally last year joining our team and the strengths we got out of his car versus the Ford, that's part of the reason why we've changed. Ryle Harris is back, and after claiming four wins from the final two rounds last year, the former champion could have momentum on his side for the season opener. So we won the most races, but not the championship, but, you know, we're back this year. No major sponsor yet, but uh, hopefully a good result this weekend will change that. You know, I really want that third championship. I want to be the first guy to win three titles, that's for sure. Some seasoned campaigners have found a new home. Craig Dantas and Kim Jane join Adam Marjoram at an expanded Erebus racing team. Motivation last year was uh, down, or confidence was down. Um, but I thought, look, let's wipe those slate clean. We've got a new sponsor, so uh, let's obviously start with something new. And, um, you know, just changing everything. And uh, so far, again, it's, um, it's really refreshing. I'm uh, rejuvenated, I'm feeling young, looking young. And uh, again, just loving my time here at Erebus. I'm going to win one, it's, it's, it's got to be sort of now. So we'll, we'll have a really Red Hot Crack, we're just sort of, it's a long season, there's a lot of races. As I said, Clipsal has been, been one of our tough ones, but look out Camp Perth, Darwin and Townsville, we'll be really pushing hard. It's a great team dynamic now, we've, uh, we've got a whole lot of experience on the team and it's good that we can actually share data and notes and figure out where people are weak and strong and um, at the end of the day it's only going to benefit all of us, so really, really good to have them on board. George Mideki also has a new old home. He's in a Ford and reunited with Matt Stone Racing, who he partnered with in the V8 Supercars Dunlop Series in 2013. He can't wait to step up this year, starting on a street circuit he loves. You've really got to throw it at the fence to be anywhere near the front, and uh, but also you've got to be precise and not overdrive a car. So, yeah, it's really good. You know, I, I think it's a real driver's track, and, and that's why I really, you know, I really enjoy driving it. Three rookies contesting the series this year include 17-year-old Mason Barbera, who is the youngest driver to compete in the series, Victorian Lee Nicolau, who debuted in the Bathurst round last year, and Jordan Skinner, who had a momentary outing at Clipsal last year that ended in disaster. Uh, there, was a, there was a little bit of swearing going on in the cockpit, I'm not going to lie, um, and there was just one of those things where you just look down and go, oh, did that really happen? But yeah, you just got to get on with it and move on to the next thing.
Time to check out the qualifying highlights. I've got Paul Morris alongside me in a very different format for qualifying. The boys had to get up on it very early, Paul, because the number one Holden and four drivers would go through to a top two shootout. Yeah, you have to be the, the uh, fastest of either Ford or the Holden to make the front row of the grid. So no second chances, just get up on the wheel and let it rip. It meant that everyone was pushing very hard, especially at the centre chicane, including Andrew Fisher and Jeff Fain. On uh, the 20 minute session that kicked off qualifying, there's just no time to leave it on the line and only the number one Holden and number one Ford would progress. And I guess, Paul, it's just a great way to celebrate the history in the sport. Oh, exactly. So, number one Ford, number one Holden on the front row of the grid. Couldn't be any better. Although the two Fords were arguing with each, uh, with each other here. It's the slideways Ford of Cam Wilson and the man who's uh, been quite busy so far this weekend in Bruce Oakland's. Bad news for Al Harris. He was meant to start the front row, but he was the second fastest Ford, so he got bumped back behind this guy. Bumped back behind McNally, and McNally was very committed, especially through turn eight. Yeah, he put it all on the line, scraped there the paint. There and uh, would make the top two shootout, would lay down an OK time, but it was always going to be beatable for the rank co of Chris Walton. But, Paul, we only know one way for Walton, and that is 100%. He was either going to take pole by half a second or do the opposite and put it in the fence. And as we're about to see, it was the latter. Well, he was committed and uh, got to about turn four, and that's where it all unfolded <laughs> for him. So I lose McNally on the pole, which is really good for him, his first pole position. Bang, into the fence goes the Queenslander. It would also hurt the tyre bank for the weekend. The Utes only have six fresh tyres, and that left front looking very average. He also flat spotted one earlier. Hurt the left front guard bank and the left door <laughs> bank. <laughs> also the ego bank. But let's check out arm roll pole position winner for the first time ever in the Stratco Ute. Congratulations to the fast West Aussie in Reese McNally. And I think that makes it like five years in a row now that we've had a Cedars car on the front row in Adelaide. It'll take a thousand buckaroos as well. Perfect way to start season 2015, thanks to Armoral. The boys are getting ready. Three big races to kick off the weekend and what's going to be a massive season of the East Coast Bull Bars Bear Youth Series. It all starts in Adelaide. This round, we profile the youngest rookie to compete in the V8 Ute Racing Series, 17-year-old Mason Barbera. I got into V8 Utes through Chris Walton. Uh, we raced each other in go-karts. My background is karting, and still, I still compete. Talking after the race meeting, we became friends because you know, we realised we both raced each other pretty hard. And Chris Jones decided to give me a go in his, uh, in his V8 Ute at Queensland Raceway, and I went out there and impressed a few people that uh, needed to impress. And they're both high powered, on not very good tyres. It's close racing, the whole field's close together. It's all about using your brain. I'm racing with a purpose this weekend. I've got Diabetic Foundation as a sponsor on the side of my car. Myself losing my grandfather to diabetes, which was you know, incredibly sad, he was my best friend. I'm um, also in the team that I race for. There's a few people that have diabetes and you know their family members. So yeah, it's good to be representing something that means something to us. Time to get it on for 2015 with the Utes. And the boys are pulling around turn 14 and onto the grid. The fanfare begins. In come the girls. The Utes are out there. Arnie the Armour All Man is out there as well. And uh, Paul promises to be an exciting race because we've already had race one, which was to set the grid for this one. It wasn't worth points, but the boys put it all on the line anyway. Well, it was committed as in this race as they were in qualifying. Three guys at the front just completely going at it. Nelly got the jump off the start after climbing pole position, up on two wheels, beautiful Picked out stuff. a bit of a lead to start with, and then um, Ryle really put the pressure on, started passing cars. Through turn eight on the first lap, cold Yokohama tyres. Thankfully, everyone managed to keep it off that big, nasty turn eight wall. Although they're getting pretty close, but watch Harris in the background here with the big move up the inside. Bit of bump, a rattle on the bumper bar, pushed Walton a little bit wide, up the inside, cleared him. And then Walton wanted to... Yeah, just get out, mate. How are you? <laughs> just remind yeah, him that but, uh, we're going to go racing like that. I'll make myself very clear about how I want to race. This Harris. is a really good move. Yeah, for the lead, up the inside. Very controlled, then just pulled away. So, Royal definitely with the quickest car on the track here in this race, for sure. Turn 14 was the place to get moves done. Up goes the Renko Ute and puts the Stratco Ute back a spot. McNally got a good over-under yeah, out of turn good 14. Good run back. He'll sneak back by him here. And uh, it was Harris who would take it all the way to the flag and take career win number 32 in the Utes, making him the most winningest driver in history after taking over Grant Johnson's record. So congratulations yeah, to Ryan. Nice accolade to have. 
love that word, winningest. Sounds awful, but amazingly it's true. And uh, the holidaysforlife.com.au ute looking very good. He's actually looking for some more sponsorship as well in 2015. Bad news for McNally. He clipped a tyre bundle and hurt the steering, ended up dropping back to 19th. He actually broke the steering rack in half, so he did well to get the car home. So um, he's fast. I reckon he'll move back up through this race. He's proved he can pass cars. At a margin, by the way, third in that first race. Personal best for the Auto One driver. There is a very strange sight. Cedars driving a Holden Ute. Got the Ryko Ute back again as well. Yeah, it's not working for him, the switch so far, so. Mm. He's been quick, just can't get any clear uh, space ahead of him. Roll Harris and Chris Walton, Queenslanders on the front row. Erebus teammates on the second row. George Medici after making the move to Matt Stone Racing, has got some speed. And David Cedars back there on the fourth row. Nathan Pretty's got some speed. Last minute deal to get back in the seat with Murphy Motorsport. And further back, Adam Beachy and Mason Barbera, pair of rookies back on row seven. So uh, we're really looking forward to Paul watching McNally come through the field, I think. I think he's got to be the one to watch. Um, yeah, broken steering rack. He's back in the pack. They would have fixed the car. Obviously had some blinding speed in qualifying, some confidence up, and the manoeuvres he's been passing people with and the way he's been on the track all, all throughout the weekend so far, he looks like he's driving with confidence, so let's keep an eye on him. The guys at the back, your Noel Edges, Oakland, Mork, they've been not backwards and coming forward with no, well, this weekend. Yeah, they are racing for seep stations at the back of the pack, <laughs> so plenty of action right through the field here. All right, let's get racing in Adelaide. East Coast Bull Bars, V8 Ute Series is go for race two. Good start from Harris or Staller at the back. It's Charlie Kovacs, but everyone gets around him. It looks like Ryle, the kid Harris, is going to lead this race down towards turn one. Dontas side by side with him. Oh, Marjoram over the curves. It's a clean start, though. One of the better start for Cedars. Two Cedars up to fifth here, Paul. Everybody trying to stop the brakes from locking. Looked like Kim Jane was into the back of someone there, and oh, Wilson gets punted out. On board now with the Jesus Racing Ute, who picks up two spots. Yeah, Beautiful. Took advantage of all that uh, melee there in turn four. It's just heads up driving, looking down the road, seeing what's happening, and then obviously trying to capitalise on other people's mistakes without uh, risking yourself. Oh no, Mason Barbera. Looks like he's got broken steering. He'll get it out of there, hopefully. Let's see if he can keep that thing moving. He's had bad luck on the opening lap of races so far. We saw it happen in Sydney as we tip in through turn eight for the first time. And it's fast through here. They're doing 180 kilometers an hour. Oh, Marjoram locks one up. So too does Dantas on the podium here last year. Craig Dantas with uh, Wayne Wakefield and David Cedars. Would love to repeat that performance. He works all year round at this event. It's part of their business development group. Riding the curbs nicely, keeping it steady, looking good in fourth position. So we look to tick off the first lap. First lap, all pretty tidy. Up the inside, Medic, he thinks about a move on Hansford, doesn't go ahead with it. Oh, a bit of a tap between Pretty and also Jeremy Gray. Jeremy Gray won the Legends of uh, 10 years of racing with the Vout back in 2010, an event that you were a part of. Paul, the boys are going to go side by side. Let's just see how this pans out. Dangerous spot to go side by side. Pretty keeps his foot in it. And these two are going to continue to be side by side all the way down towards turn four, maybe. Yeah, you want to tidy it up right about now. Now we're going to go three oh. wide. Kim Jane buys in there. And look at this. McNally's already up with these guys. So he's passed cars early, which is what he needed to do. Let's just see how he does it. He's placing his car. It's a, there, he's taking the position off, off Kim there. Nice work. Kim Jane, a man who's never stood on the podium at this event. And it's not looking like it's going to change this weekend either. He's still got that car speed he had from race one. Or oh, car pulled over on the left. That might be Barbera's car getting put behind the wall. I was going to say, you raced in the uh, Legends of 10 Years race. We also had Stephen Bradbury, Olympic gold medalist yeah, we racing. Yeah, had, had a few hitters in there. It was a pretty cool weekend. Bradbury didn't come from the back with everyone falling off the road to win that one. Down towards the turn nine, hairpin we go. It's interesting to watch how relaxed uh, Chris is inside the car, but when you when you look at his body, the car from the from the outside, he doesn't look like it there. There you go, he's a little bit loose coming off the corner. And that's the main difference you're seeing between Ryle and uh, Chris at the moment. Take the curbs at turn 13, the Fords. Love those medium corners. Fourth back to second for turn 14. Just trying to squeeze the power on. 
And everyone's nice and clean to complete the second lap. Plenty more to go here in Adelaide. It's race two for V8 Utes. Over the curbs we go down at turn one. Famous centre chicane with the great landmarks. The Adelaide Parkland circuit. Royal Harris, still your leader, looking to go two from two, but this is the first race of the championship that matters for points, and it really matters back here with McNally up the inside of Jared McLeod. McLeod never hands a position over easily. So McNally's, McNally's really starting to move forward now, looking aggressive. Oh! He's going to have a real dip here. <laughs> That's one way of getting to the front. He's going to move a few people out of his way. Jared has a berm there to, to get the job done. <laughs> and while driving from Jared cleaning that thing up on the exit. Stream Clutch is on board with Andrew Fisher as he unloads through the gears. It's been a rough weekend for him. That Ute has been overheating. East Coast Bull Bars replay of the start towards the back. It's the local boy in Charlie Kovacs, but uh, Oakland's, I think it was, who did a good job missing him. Yeah, so you notice the wave yellow flags there on the side of the circuit. The drivers would have picked them up, realised there was someone uh, uh, stalled on the grid. All quite aware of that. Man, McNally was just flying off the start. Yeah, he's got to get it done. He, he's really got to get it done. Obviously, um, making up for those lost positions at the end of race one. Oh, oh, there's the heavy contact for Mason Barbera. Doesn't explain why the right front was broken, though. Further back, we've got Noel Edge and Bruce Oaklands. Oh, and contact made. Also, Fane's involved with this one. Fane was the one who ended up being turned around as a result of all of that. That's McLeod. McLeod, so yeah, he just got hip and shoulder out of the road by uh, McNally, and luckily the fence caught him. This is, <laughs> this is Fisher's view of all that. Hang on to it, brother. He's all right. <laughs> He's all right. He's racing with an injured finger this weekend as well. There we go, Edge. And Oakland's part two. Oh, and that's probably how you go cutting a tie down. I think that might be a right rear puncture to Oakland's. He's recently purchased that ute from Ben Dunn, running it with the Cedars racing team as we're halfway home. and. Picking up the leaders right now. Walton is keeping that gap steady. Yeah, he's been very aggressive through the first sector of the, of the track. Just jumping the curbs, freestyling it. Doing whatever he can to, to make up time on Ryle. Through the infamous turn eight. Nothing between them there. They're both very committed. Oh. Massive engine braking, just trying to slow the car up. And that's a key, isn't it? Because it's these things break much more like an everyday road car than a bad supercar would. Yeah, they've got uh, basically a road car braking system with a brake booster and then very big racing caliper on the front. So a lot of front grip from the from the tyre and probably too much the tyre can handle. Two race wins in 2009 at this track for Ryle Harris. He now makes that three race wins, but never the round win here on the streets of Adelaide. He's been on the podium three times. This could be the weekend, though, given the form that he's in. And we believe that Walton chasing him right now might be on some uh, old tyres. McNally's sneaking back up through the pack. He's starting to really hunt these guys down. He's past Jeremy Gray, who won that 2010 10 Years of Legends race, sharing the car with Slick Medici. And Slick came back from his racing ventures in so, the USA. Uh, a bit of lap traffic coming up here, mate. I'm not surprised they've caught them because those guys at the back were warring and bouncing into each well, other. just into it in this part of the track. OK, now, Harris has to be careful because he's caught up to Oakland's. Loving Oakland's nickname this week, by the way, the Fat Stig. And watch watch Killer through this next series of turns. He'll just launch this car off this curb here and try and catch it. <laughs> there he goes. So he's making up time by just jumping the car, basically. You're riding on board with the defending champ. Rentco on board. Lap traffic. Oh, Harris is caught. Oakland's in a really awkward spot, and this might open up the door for Walton. Can he get up the inside? No. No blue flags being shown either. So I'm not sure if Oakland's knows what's Oakland's going on behind. Oakland's pretty good under brakes, isn't he? <laughs> He's doing a good job defending. Uh-oh, that looked like the Mango Credit Ute getting a little bit sideways. He's done the right thing. He's got out of the way now for the boys. Oh, no, Cedars. Cedars. Cedars and Hansford. In the fence with Hansford. These two were at each other all last year. And a couple of new sponsors visible on the back yeah. of these cars. Trying Lap to get going. out of there. That conveyor belt just grabs the front of the car, so... Well, you wouldn't have experience with that, would you, Paul? I did at uh, Bathurst. I had a little <laughs> bit of experience with that. <laughs> it's an awful feeling. You're just sitting there, you're trying to get out of it, and spinning the wheels, and you're going nowhere. So, Oakland's has been passed by the lead pack. Killer's having a bit of a sniff. And just 
look at Marjoram here. He's biding his time, looking after his tyres. Oh, sideways through the centre chicane. And this is the time for Walton. Turn four could be the spot. So Ryle's going defensive here. He's throwing the block. He'll be onto it. Oh, understeer, tyres screaming. Bump and run, maybe? No. Uh, Ryle's just going to sit here mid-track. It's not going to really give Chris any options. There's no way around that white ute through that part of the track. And he just can't get the power down enough to get his nose up on the inside. How about here? If he can get a good run out of seven. Oh, launches it off run. the curb. Yeah. I don't know how you can get the power down with the rear tyres. <laughs> <laughs> Let's check out this East Coast Bull Bars replay. Mediki picks up so two spots wide. here. Yeah. Oh. And you just don't want to be on the guy on the outside. So what happens there? You go down the inside. Oh! You know, <laughs> I thought Walton was gone then, Paul. Yeah. Sorry about that. That's all right. Oh, down close. at turn nine. Marjoram's closed the gap here in the Auto 1 Ute because of this great battle. Doing a great job, Marjoram. Just keeping it clean. Rolling up to the back of these guys. Exciting racing at the front. Let's get another quick ad break in. You do not want to miss how this is going to wind up. Race two for the season opener. It's absolutely going off. You've got Ryle Harris leading the way from Chris Walton. Renko on board right now. Walton just hasn't got an answer for his good friend, but oversteer. Oh, yeah, that's Walton's Achilles heel of this race. He just cannot get the power down. He carries massive corner entry speed, and Ryle just eats out that little gap just coming off the corner each time. Madiki having a bit of a sniff here now, too. He's had his mirrors boxed in. But he's still pushing on. He doesn't need mirrors at the moment because he is looking at that front windscreen and chasing down the local star, Dontis, whose twin brother is actually racing this weekend as well. Slicky's looking and tapping. Yeah, a bit of Morse code on the rear bumper. Just let him know you're there. Sometimes it'll up, up, you know, unsettle the guy in front. Get him looking in his mirrors. How do you respond to that kind of treatment? Oh, uh, you just ignore it. <laughs> <laughs> cool, calm, collected dude, like yeah, always. Yeah, you just ignore it. But, um... oh, man, it meant so much for the just car driver, Dontis, to be on the podium last year. Medici's been on the podium as well, but I've got to go back to 2008, the last time that he was on the podium here. And the killer just so committed through turn eight. And this could be the moment for Slick. He's no. He's fast. His switch to Matt Stone Racing has been really good for him. Obviously, uh... With Ryle Harris leading the race, driving for Matt Stone Racing as well. It's uh, working working for Slick. It's gaining some information, giving him some confidence. Oof. So actually an ex Danny Bazadzik gear, that one. And some newer gear to work with, I think, is probably the way of looking at it after driving for Warren Millett. So it's a good chance now for Slick to really have a go in the championship. And he might go a bit under the radar this year, I think. He's one that we really need to worry about in terms of a points battle. He could definitely win the championship this year, but he needs to pass a few more cars in the first points race Final of the year. Lap. So Walton's got to have a big go here. Which oh. he does, just launches the car off turn one. Look at the gap he closes in. Picked up about half a second. He's right up on the bumper of Ryle now. No surprises. He had a curb strike for that one. Well, he's got a couple in reserve, so use them up on the last lap. And this is where he's aggressive. The time Walton makes up through this part of the track is amazing just by using parts of the track no one else is using. Oh, oh, no, that's Charlie Kovacs in the Air Road 69. He's had a moment, he's found he's the up fence. inside there, he's had a look. Here we go. Walton pitches the right front. Can he lean on him? Oh, they avoid contact. Good clean racing. It was very clean. I think Walton was in his rights to probably give him one in the door then, but he obviously wanted to keep the friendship intact. I, I thought he told <laughs> you before the race that he didn't mind if the friendship got burned no, here. That, that was Ryle. Okay. <laughs> That's one-way traffic then in that case. But, uh, he was long enough, long sighted him enough where he probably could have given him a rub. Either way, the kid remains in the front. And he is looking to eke out that series lead now. Yeah, well, I think we'll have yellow flags in this last sector too. With the... Oh, good point, because we do have... Kovacs, you'd stranded, stranded down there. Stranded there, so... Oh, and yes. Gabe, Walton loose, so... His rears just look done in. Yeah, they'll be going away to look at that. Oh, we've had another big one. I think that's McLeod. Cam Wilson. Oh, Wilson's gone into the wall really hard. Peter Burnett's managed to pick his way through. McLeod's car was doing the crab walk down the back straight. Meanwhile, Harris is going to take two wins this weekend. Congratulations to him. Marjorie, a nice job in third. 
That's the first time in over a year race one winner's gone on to win McNally. also race two. Six, I think. And, yeah, good pick. The Strat Ute has gone ripping through 13 cars. Let's get through the damage. First of all, you've got Charlie Kovacs, who's uh, out of his car. That's good news. He's walking away after stalling on the grid. He managed to get himself back up to 19th before this one happened. There's Richard Mork. Oh, nothing to do with Richard Mork. That's a, oh. that's a failure. Left front. Look, I'd probably say a flat tyre. Left front, flat tyre. So maybe Man. some contact. The, the corner before, cut the tyre down, turn in, no one home, straight in the fence. OK, now what's happened to the Maverick here? He's driving with stitches in his finger. Oh, my goodness! So, uh... The bonnet comes up, smashes the windscreen. And look at him, he's trying to see through the gap. He's still digging, he's still <laughs> driving this thing, so... <laughs> wow, that is... Borderline crazy, but also pretty badass, I guess. Yeah, well, it's, it is, but you've got to have some respect for your other competitors out there too. So to, to roll through turn eight here with the bonnet up. Oh, that's dangerous. Oh, man. That's a nasty one for Cam Wilson. Cam Wilson just has no luck. I mean, he had that massive smash here oh, 12 months ago with Jordan Skinner. He's just completed a 24-hour go-kart race again to better his own world record to raise... Money that's a big hit. Like, you're doing 180 in, in the fence there. And it's a big hit. There'll be a lot of damage to that car, and probably to, probably to Cam as well. Oh, no, that is a heartbreaking way to wind up the race. Ford will take a couple of wins this weekend, courtesy of Royal Harris. Walton pushed him all the way. Marjoram first to the Commodores, but driver of the race has to be Rhys McNally. Rhys McNally through the pack, proved that he has got the speed in the race that he did have from qualifying. Adam Beachy, top 10. That's a magnificent effort with the uh, the clean group, Commodore. He's doing a fantastic job as our uh, leading rookie at the moment. More rookies back here in Jordan Skinner and uh, also Lee Nicolau. So the rookies putting in a good performance so far. Oh, gee, Cedars in 20th. And not sure what happened to Fisher. He's dropped a long way back there. Plenty of hard luck stories at the back, but it's Ryle Harris who'll go two from two. He'll take the series lead. Did a very good job dealing with the traffic, keeping his cool. Roll an almost faultless performance, although uh, Chris did get a little close to you there at one stage. Yeah, I think uh, one of the new guys to the series is getting lapped and he just had no idea. He, I don't know whether he was trying to block us or he pulled over, but he, when you try and let someone through, you've got to actually button off and he almost took both of us out. But, you know, we got through it and Chris got back up to me and gave me a couple of love taps, but I suppose he's getting me back from race one. So, you know, we had two new tyres on the front there. I knew we had good pace and we sort of got a bit of a lead until that incident happened, but... You know, two from two, and not, even though the first race didn't mean anything, but, um, you know, front row tomorrow, hopefully do the same thing, and Chris and I are going to be racing door-to-door -door all year, so we're going to have to get used to it, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable racing against him, but, um, you know, I just want to get a good result. I need a major sponsor, and, you know, win this weekend or hopefully help me secure one for the, for the rest of the year. He's looking good in 2015. We're racing in Adelaide. There's still one more big race to go. You don't want to miss it. No doubt about it, Adelaide. It's one of the best events of the season, the Clipsal 500, and the Utes taking centre stage for their third and final race of the weekend. Siren sounds, the boys are on the grid. McLeod's Utes been banged up a fair bit. He's had the night in hospital getting glass washed out of his eyes. It's been in the wars so far, and this is how they'll line up on the East Coast Bull Bars grid. Got Harris alongside Walton. You reckon Harris can go three from three? Oh, you've got to give it a go. He's definitely got the fastest Ute out there. So, have to see. Killers looks like he's a bit loose. Hasn't got the tyres to take it to him, so he'll have to just freestyle it and get past him. It's been a long time since we've seen someone clean sweep a weekend in the Utes, but I guess not having the reverse grid race this weekend helps that one out. Cam Wilson's a no-show. That car, irreparable after last night. It's a massive hit. Reese McNally's going to be strong to watch uh, after the amount of cars that he passed in race two. Mason Barbera and Jared McLeod off the back row. Riding aboard with Andrew Fisher. Extreme clutches on board. Got a few more, including the Speed Cafe on board. The local racer, Craig Dontis, and Peter Burnett, thanks to Yokohama Tyres, will be following number four. And off the front row, what better view do you need? Chris Walton in the rank co on board, trying to win a race and win the championship again in 2015. Here we go, let's get after it. Green flag is waved. Ready for a start. Red lights go out, and away we go. We've got an, another staller. Marjoram. It's Marjoram. He's sitting in a very precarious he spot. He's fired it back up. He's moving. Oh, I'm thinking. That was a nervous moment. I thought there was no way the whole field would get around him. Oh, Harris is sideways. 
this is an exciting start to race three, and Walton has won the start. Dontis on the outside. Harris is not going to let him have it. He needs to keep second. McNally's up to fourth. already into fourth. Medici's going with him. Kim James magically appeared towards the top of the field as well, and McNally hard on oh, the brakes. Nice work. Bumps the door of Dontis, sends him out wide over the curbs. Exciting racing. The boys are still going to be at it down at turn seven. Jane up the inside of Medici. They've got Nathan Pretty biding his time behind them. Exciting start. Oh, no. This is not what you want to be doing on approach to turn Too eight. wide for a hill. will just not work. Someone's going to be eating concrete here. I don't think it's going to happen. Neither boy is going to lift. And it puts Dantas in the fence. But he hangs in it. Keeps his right foot planted. He loses two or three spots. This is famous Goes year racing. Badiki and then how to... Oh. Hard under brakes. And... Medici picked up a Capitalised out of all that, so there must have been a bit of scuffle between... Oh, tap, tap, tap so between Jane... He can't actually turn in. <laughs> he's trying to turn <laughs> And he's got pretty up the inside of him and puts Jane out well and truly wide. Oh, around goes Skinner. And also contact with Bernard. Flames underneath the Warm all over his tyres. Oh, it's all kicked off at the final race. Bad news for the local driver of Jordan Skinner. Turned around and damaged to Danny Bazadzic. Wow, wait. First lap action around the Adelaide Street Circuit. Oh, here we go. Battle for the lead. He's inside him. Oh, nice, nice move. Nice move, Ryan. We haven't seen a move. A lot of respect there. between these two guys, isn't it? Lots of clean racing. It's been a great battle to watch. So. Nelly just used everyone's oh, draw up. Harris is coming in hot. He's bowled a wide here, mate. Oh, no. He's in the fence. The mirror's off it. He's thrown it away. He did all the hard work to pass Chris Walton. Not an easy task. And he hands it back to him. And has he got damage, other than the mirror? I don't think so. He's just got it in the tyres, kept his boot into it, pulled the mirror off, and now he's keeping on trucking. Man, what a mistake to make. He did all the hard work. There's Beachy. He's having a blinder of a weekend. He's got himself up in front of Jeremy Gray and Ryan Hansford. So there's going to be a bit of pressure. A couple of very experienced new drivers in behind him. And poor Marjoram, who's trying to rip through the field. He's fighting back with... David Cedars is having a shocking weekend when you consider how good he's been here before Cedars. Three event wins, a couple of race wins. Now driving that Commodore, not helping him out this weekend, though. So madiki has been the big uh, mover out of this aggressive driving. He's oh. picked up a few spots. It's Coast Ball Bar's replay. First of all, oh, he got the thing moving and then it stopped, yeah. Marjoram. And he had, he had the common sense to try and refire oh. it straight away and just get it going, so... Um, He's having him. a ripper weekend too. As to how they all missed him. He was on for a personal best weekend. On for a podium. He's thrown it away at the start. He'd be livid with himself. That was the view. The extreme clutches on board of Andrew Fisher. How this didn't end up in a 20-car pileup, no idea. Oh. Well, the reason it didn't is because uh, V8 Ute sideways through there and hanging the tail out of the concrete actually helped straighten it up. Look, bang, <laughs> there we go. Man, I think it might have hurt the steering, though. He's got a bit of left-hand pull on that now. Yeah. He's got beat up by everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Having a bit of a sore on the wheel there to work it out. They're all into each other down at turn between, nine. Yeah. Between uh, Jane and McNally down there. I'd like to see what happened there, actually. Tough one to really blame this on anyone. I mean, they're all into each other. There's Bazadzi getting into the back of Skinner, who gets turnarounds. It's just a mid-pack brawl. Everyone just trying to get on with it. This is the view from Lee Nicolau as Armageddon unfolds in front of him. Lee doing a great job as a rookie to avoid that mess and pick up one or two spots. Maybe Burnett dropping some oil there with that fire. Definitely dropping oil. Here's Rahabol on the wide at four. Uh, bit of wheel work back on the gas. And uh, what do we have here? Okay, this is Kovacs. Noel Hedge again. He has just been in everything this weekend. He had nothing to do with that one. That was not his fault in the least. And I think Bruce Oakland's was also a part of that one. So Walton, your leader, with some kind of tyre life left that I don't know. And then this guy's just magically appeared in third. Nice work, Slick Medici. And by the way, Paul, the way they sit on the racetrack is actually how they'll finish up for the podium. Because Walton and Harris will be on equal points. And that will see as a result... The, uh, the win of the round going to whoever finishes higher in the last race. So that's good news for Chris Walton. Well, they'll all be aware of that. The teams will be talking to him, giving them a points read. But will it end up that way? We'll have to wait and see. It's exciting racing on the streets of Adelaide. The conclusion's coming up shortly.
final race of the opening round, East Coast Bull Bars V8 Ute Series. It's been an absolute thriller so far. We've had paint swap, cars in the fence, there's been fire, and two swaps for lead, which is currently being held by defending series champ Chris Walton. So we're halfway into it. Walton's got a, about a half a second gap over Ryle. We're watching Nathan Pretty, 2013 event winner here at the front of this pack. And uh, there's the stranded ute of Kovacs by the look of it, so he must have some damage after that early incident. Yeah, that shouldn't affect the race. It's off the racing line, there'll be just a stationary yellow flag there. I don't think we've actually had a safety car this week. Well, sneaking Utah, right we? up onto the back of the killer now. Here we go. He He's... wants a sniff. So they're equal on points. Whoever wins the race wins the round. And Ryle's shown he's not scared to throw the bumper at the killer. Now, Walton probably would have learnt from Harris as to how to drive on the defensive side of the racetrack through the staircase, we call it. Will he park the car over to the right? Uh, a little bit, but probably knows that Harris isn't close enough, but he locks the left front. Could he do what Harris did? No, he gets a turn. That's so Walton is super strong on this part of the track. Oh, no, it's Domtus. He'll get that out of there, hopefully, yep. He was having such a good race weekend, but I think he might have broken steering yeah, here. Yeah, the uh, right front looks a bit tucked in there. Oh, and another one, a big one. Now, this is Jeff Thane and Bruce Oakland, so they've got together on the front straight. They look like they've made but heavy they contact. They've all weekend, actually. They have. They've <laughs> had a few, a few moments. It looks like Thane's pointing his finger out of the driver's side door squarely at Oakland's. And that's nasty. Oakland's who was uh, leasing that car. So we've got the safety car out. Oakland's leased that car last year and now is having a full-time campaign as the owner of the X-Ben Dunute. This is taking the pressure right off the killer now. Yeah, and Ryle it's... was definitely closing in. Well, Fane's, Fane's climbing out, out. out. And he looks like he wants to have some chat. words here. Seeing if he's OK. <laughs> <laughs> With a couple of choice words and he yeah, not happy. slams the door. Well, how has all this unfolded? Look at the it's massive just... impact on oh, the, uh, on the opening to the track there. So there's steel doors that open up the track. They're not actually concrete. And they've bashed those doors in. So it's a big hit, mate. He's a worked up fella right now. Jeff Fain, there's the damage to the fence. It's broken the concrete in places. We're not going to get back to racing here, I don't think. That could be day done for the Utes. We're lucky we've... Uh... Okay, so here it is. He's up the inside. That's fair enough. Okay. Fane gets sideways at the exit and cut. Whoa! What's going on there? So uh, Fane's just decided to come back and give him one in the door. Looks like they've uh, hooked up or hooked up. So what what actually happens is the tire. It's because you run so much camber on the front of the cars. You'll see it tire to tire. Oh. Both 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 wheels pull into each other, and it just feels like. Each, each, each driver's turning down on each driver and then straight in the fence, so... Thankfully, all of the officials are OK. Yeah, you see, look, turns right on him. Yeah. yeah. Once the two wheels get hooked up, you can't get, you can't get unhooked. And uh, I think the officials might be having a word to him about that one. He got out and wanted to have yeah. a few words with him. I don't know why. Maybe it's to do with something else that happened, but looking at that incident there, there's uh, yeah. really only one person to blame for that one. Well, he's certainly got his 15 seconds of fame today, famous fame. And that will, unfortunately, bring out the chequered flag, which will mean that Chris Walton, amazingly, is going to steal the round win from Raul Harris. Harris has won two races this weekend, but won't be taking the top step of the podium. They will be equal on points, but That will make it very exciting. There are the two stranded cars in the background. I guess Mediki will come home for third. Gee, Jared McLeod's passed half the field here to getting glass washed out of his eye. Nearly cut his finger off with a circular saw early this week. Good job to come from the back. Got touched up by the stewards overnight in the steward room as well. Yeah, so to they slapped him on the wrists. Brush that off and come home with a, a good result's great. Well, it's a, a bit of an unusual way to wind up the weekend. Marjoram fought back to ninth. Congratulations to Chris Walton. That's his third race win here on the streets of Adelaide. Mediki will get the podium. McNally's been fantastic this weekend. Disappointing that he's not on the podium, to be honest. Lee Nicolau, pretty good effort from the rookie. David Cedars, MIA this weekend. Yeah, and a horrible weekend for David. Can only get better, I guess, from there. Mason Barbera staying out of trouble. The 17-year-old will finish in uh, 20th position. Kim Jane... Two laps down. Yeah, caught up in that first lap crash. Problems for Dontis, a DNF for them, as well as uh, a few other guys. 
Let's check out how the points wound up. Remember, only the two races counted for the points. It was equal, but because Walton won the last race, he wins the round. Also good to see two Matt Stone racing utes inside the top three. An unbelievable effort, Adam Beachy in seventh. But let's hear from our winner. Chris, some great racing between yourself and Roland. You've walked away as the round leader. Um, yeah, well, I mean, we've, we've had a great weekend. That car's been brilliant of mine. The Renko crew have done an awesome job on that car since it got here. So, um, no, good. I mean, I made a small mistake at the, in, the, in the shootout this morning where people thought I was texting and hit the wall. <laughs> and it looks like Roll's done the same thing in the last race, texting too much and hit the wall. So, um, luckily, he made that mistake and um, I was able to get back in front of him and, and safety car conditions. I mean, he was coming back. It was going to be a tough finish. But, but, I mean, we come out in front, we're equal on points. So, going into round two, we're zeroed out. Let's go again. Congratulations to Chris Walton, but our DBA hard breaker goes to this guy, the pole sitter, after fighting his way back from 19th to 6th in race two. Our Masters Award, an award that's no doubt quite close to Paul Morris's heart for the over 40s, goes to this week, Andrew Fisher. Congratulations to him, fast again in 2015. And uh, our Rookie of the Year at the moment, well, it's the clean group driver, Adam Beachy. But this is how they line up on the podium. It's the fourth time we've seen Harris on the podium. First time we've seen Mediki since 2008 here in Adelaide. Congratulations to him. But the next time that we go racing will be in Perth, Barbagello Raceway. Sandy, windy, it's the Wild West, and the Utes love racing around that very tight circuit. A massive thank you to Paul Morris for helping us out in commentary. Round one has been extremely exciting, from the Holden versus Ford rivalry to bonnets coming up on windshields to wild crashes and a great fight between Chris Killer Walton and Ryle Harris that looks set to continue through the season. This has been round one of the East Coast Bull Bars V8 Ute Series from Adelaide.